I'm Matthew Lency. I'm one of the founding members of Hano, a digital product design team that makes digital products accessible, relatable, and human. So Matt, thanks so much for joining us. It's uh, really good to meet you. Um, and talking us through uh, your ethos and your um, philosophy of how to do socially good business. Um, first things first, can you talk us through Hanno? What do you guys do? Okay, to put it in quite simplistic terms, we're a digital product design team, which means we make websites, mobile phone applications, and basically create solutions with technology for startups and corporates. So who are some of the corporates and startups that uh, you've worked with? I think the most, uh, can I say infamous, like the one that most people know us for is I work with Uber, which is really great. And we've also been doing some work with some quite unusual startups in America. So we've worked with an on-demand ballet company, a Bitcoin trading app, um, a smart home remote controller, so Internet of Things, we find that quite often people approach us when they have new and quirky ideas and they want to be able to make them relatable and like human. So they want to be able to translate these weird concepts or innovative technologies into something that is accessible and usable by people. Brilliant. Uh, um, and can you talk us through the philosophy of socially good business and how you enable businesses to do this? Yes, yeah, so I think I th to, I'll take a step, step back and just talk about why we've even started doing this. So it started off with us just thinking about putting human beings first. A lot of the time when we're working with clients, they talk about the, the users that they're building things for or almost um, creating this idea that people are numbers. And we wanted to take a step back and say, look, let's think about who we're making this for. Who are these human beings behind that? Because a lot of the time people think of design as almost like art and aesthetics, like something that looks visually pleasing. But design isn't really about aesthetics. It's a component, yes, but what we're talking about is problem solving on a, on a real fundamental level, looking at the root causes of an issue. And to solve that, you can't look at people as users. You need to look at them as humans. You need to ask them why. So that's something that we're really involved in. And we do that for clients by helping them establish human-centered design principles. But within HANO, we also have created a culture with human values. So we allow people to work from wherever they like remotely. We allow them to choose their own salaries. We allow them to choose their own holiday time. And all of these things were really important to us. But we wanted to go a step further and actually do something meaningful and give back. And that's where the whole social motive comes in. So for us, we were like, OK, we're saying that we are human-centered and we're helping businesses to become that. Now, how can we use our skills to give back and find people that we can help. And we found that as designers, we were able to um, accelerate and amplify the work that people were doing, like to grow them and to help them on the center stage, to help them speak to the people that they wanted to be doing business with. And we were thinking to ourselves, well, why don't we take the profits that we get from our client projects and reinvest them in companies that are doing socially motivating work? Um, and one of the ones that, uh, that we were working on was a hard of hearing app called Ava, and they designed this mobile phone application that enables deaf and hard of hearing people to join conversations just by the proximity of their microphones. So it would transcribe conversations, so right now if someone was with us, they'd be able to follow along. So we were able to reinvest the profits that we were making on our client projects to work with them for free, just with our time. And for me, that's really inspiring, you know, this idea that you can accelerate the good that great people are doing. Um, the things that you mentioned, choose your own salary, choose your own holiday, <laughs> you know, work from wherever you want. And this probably seems, you know, pretty, uh, pretty crazy to a, a lot of businesses. Um, you know, what are, what are the reasons behind this choice and what are the benefits that you guys seem to have got from it? We're trying to create a culture of autonomy, mastery and purpose. So this idea that if you can be in control of your own decisions, you're able to master the skills that you want and pursue your own career path, and you have this kind of social motive, you're going to create motivation within the team that's going to really help them to progress. So like this idea of being remote, it's not essentially like being a digital nomad or being able to work and travel a lot. It's the idea that you have the freedom to do so. And because of that, we're able to attract great talent. We're able to create a completely different dynamic where anyone can be involved in that. Do you know, do you know what I'm trying to say? So for me, like those principles enable us to bring in the best talent, attract the best people and do the best work. 
Uh, it seems that everything that you guys do um, is, is set up in pursuit of freedom in all walks of life. Um, you know, what do you, uh, what do you believe the kind of future of work or the future of the work-life balance looks like? So that's a really good question. I think one of the things of being a remote worker is that the lines get blurred. So having freedom, I always think, comes hand in hand with having responsibility. So almost too much freedom can be a bad thing unless you're very self-disciplined. Um, so I think the future is going to definitely lean more towards remote working and creating these environments where people are completely in control of their lifestyle. But I think that that will also come hand in hand with self-discipline and people being educated on how to do that. I don't think that necessarily you just want to run off into the sunset and get your computer out at, on a beach. Mm. You want to be able to overcome the challenges that come with remote working. For example, when you become a remote worker, there is isolation that you have to deal with. So you have to be very proactive in embedding yourself into communities and building community. Um, that's one of the things that I really try and do. So I run a meetup here in London for product designers because I want to create that sense of community. And I've joined um, the work life co-working purely because of that. Mm -hmm. So I think that when you get the freedom from a company to work, you've also got this personal responsibility to build a lifestyle that is both conducive to producing great work but also makes you happy. Uh, the responsibility of managing yourself extremely tightly, so much freedom, you've got so much uh, responsibility. Yeah. What do you put in place, or you know, what would your you know, top hacks be uh, to ensure that you do stay productive? My top tips are to set goals and make sure that those goals are centered around behaviors and not like specific goals, because they can always change. So an example would be, don't set yourself a goal to write a book by the end of the year. Set yourself a habit, so every morning write 150 words and make those habits become routines and build an extremely strong routine around the things that you want to achieve rather than like setting yourself a goal that's probably unachievable initially because it's such a big step. So it's just taking things and breaking them down. The second thing is um, get yourself an awesome to-do list app. There's many of them. I use Asana. And just get your five things down that you need to achieve each day and do the hardest one first. I'm sure people have heard of this where you have to eat your frog in the morning, which basically just means just do the most horrible task first and everything after is going to be great. So that's something that I live by. Just go and get that first frog out of the way and then the rest of the day is going to just zoom by. Amazing. Matt, thanks so much. That was really cool. <laughs>